Welcome back to Crochet HD. I'm your host, Jackie. To my one hit wonders, this is your first time visiting, welcome. If you are a repeat offender, welcome back. Great. Today's episode is a chit chat cafe. We chit, we chat, and we crochet. Grab your favorite beverage, your crochet, and let's get into it. So I, oh, it was an epiphany. I had an epiphany. I finished, no, I have not finished my August shawl. And um, I had mentioned that at the beginning of this month and I knew I wasn't going to finish it, but I couldn't figure out exactly why, because it wasn't that I didn't love the yarn and it wasn't that I didn't love the shawl pattern. But it occurred to me that all year out of all the project, all the shawls that I've made thus far, most of them have been made with either a DK or a worsted weight. So I was able to finish them rather quickly, except for the few months that I didn't like the April shawl, which that was a yarn issue, but it literally occurred to me yesterday that the reason why I'm not able to whip up my most recent shawl so quickly is because I've been using fingering weight yarn. Yeah, I know. So what I decided to do was hit my stash to see maybe if I could still use the same inspiration, same uh -huh. inspiration yarn and just pair it with another one to make it thicker. So lo and behold, now if you have been watching, you might recognize this. This one was part of my local yarn shop haul and it is Simplicity in the color Edgy Eggplant, 55% Merino Superwash, 28% Acrylic, and 17% Nylon. I have two balls of it, and I'm holding it double, but before I show you what the shawl looks like now, I, wanted, I do want to show you what I had been working on. Now, this is the shawl that I was using because I was doing a pattern test for it, but I was actually supposed to use a DK weight. So I ended up just doing the DK weight and actually here's the shawl right here. And if you've been following me on Instagram, you've already seen, I mean, um, and in true Jackie fashion, I did not frog my previous project before starting a new one because who has that kind of time? So this is now a yarn corpse and it, it is feeding the new September shawl, which is this. Oops. And this is my pursuing piece pattern. And I'm holding one strand of the edgy eggplant simplicity yarn along with one strand of the yarn corpse. This was the Yarn B Authentic Hand Dyed Tur Turquoise Sky. Uh, from Hobby Lobby. So now it's thick, but not thick. <laughs> it's a good kind of thick. And I think, you know, whenever it becomes cold, cold enough for it, this will be, this will be great. And I'm using a size J hook. I'm not really sure. Like I, I tried to Google, you know, what, what uh, gauge yarn is it when you hold a fingering and a sport weight together and there was some math and I don't I don't so I just bumped up the hook size and I really love how quickly this thing is working up and I will be finished in no time I do have two of these the simplicity balls I, I don't remember let me see if I can do some I'm not doing quick math y'all know that uh, so maybe two balls of this will uh, use up one ball of the fingering weight yarn. I'm not sure because I might actually stop when I finish the first skein of this, depending on how long it is, because then it could just be a cowl, which I always thought a cowl was something that actually had to be closed. Like it, you know, like it fit around your neck, like a tube. But, uh, the more I'm doing research, the more I'm seeing that that's not necessarily the case. A short shawl could be considered 
a cowl. So, whatever. Oh, I'll um, probably go ahead and just use both of them because I, I wasn't really sure what I was going to do with this either. But it's just so pretty and perfect together that I probably would not be happy with any other project. So, this is what I'll be working on as we chit and chat today. With that being said, ooh, 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 did you get a chance to see the tutorial that I did for the Pursuing Peace shawl? It's my very first tutorial. I was a little bit nervous and um, I'm hoping that that didn't come through in in a bad way. I, I, I don't really think I realized what all went into doing a tutorial and I'm not opposed to them at all. As a matter of fact, I've got a couple of ideas for some things in the future. I'm thinking maybe December, January time, but you know, it's, it's in my notebook. So we don't have to worry that Jackie will forget. If you're interested though, please let me know, know in the comment section because what I'd like to do really, it's like it's a crochet along and I know I'd mentioned before that I wanted to do the sha la la long, sha la la long. That's the only way I can say it. I can't say it the right way. Sha la la long. And I have an idea. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and tell you the idea. What I want to do is I want to find a pattern, a shawl pattern that is on Ravelry, a shawl that hasn't gotten a lot of love. In other words, you know, there, there might be maybe 20, uh, you know, projects. In other words, a lot of people either don't know it's there or, you know, they just haven't, they haven't made it. So I'd like to be able to create a crochet along with a, you know, just a shawl pattern that could use some love. You know, I think that would be a, a really cool thing. And if it, if, if nothing else, just, you know, going through Ravelry and favoriting some of these projects, that actually could be a nice bump in, you know, as a, as a designer, I would imagine if somebody to come along and do your pattern, I think that would be great. Um, one step, up, up from there would be, you know, finding a paid pattern that again has the same status as it doesn't have a lot of love. It's not an expensive pattern. So, you know, maybe if you think that you could afford maybe a five or six dollar pattern, then we can use that to establish what we will uh, form our shawl along. Shawl along. I just, I can't help it. I'm sorry. Sorry, not sorry. Uh, yeah, if we could find a pattern on Ravelry that has not seen a lot of love and we can buy it and crochet the shawl together, I think that would be awesome. So anyway, today's hmm, chit chat, we're actually going over my top 10 free crochet fall and winter sweater patterns that are on Ravelry. That was a mouthful, but I had to say it all so that I wouldn't miss a word. Okay, now the criteria for this list was one, it had to be free. Two, most of these are already on my, or in my queue. Um, I haven't necessarily made them all, but I'm familiar, uh, I'm familiar enough with the de designer that I feel that I wouldn't be steering you wrong if you decided to do any of the patterns on this list. And also, um, I did, uh, I did, I did write down the size, the size. What's that word? I did write that. I, I did include the sizes that these patterns are made in. Some of Some them are not as size inclusive as others, but they're still really good patterns. And one of them, I know for a fact, I have actually hacked to make it even larger size and it wasn't that hard to do. With that being said, brrr, number 10, oversized v-neck sweater. It is by Carrie Chambers of Crochet with Carrie. This one is available in sizes small through 5XL. It is made in an Aran weight or a heavy DK. Uh, it requires a size J hook. I like this pattern um, mainly because of the striping. Now I've never made it um, and I'm a little apprehensive about 
wearing stripes but um, I'm not against it and again having done a few of um, Carrie's projects before I feel like this one is a good fit especially if you're a beginner, a beginner to making your own sweaters. Number nine is the slouchy cardigan again by Carrie Chambers of Crochet with Carrie. Now this one is the another one that it, this one has two names. When I first uh, found it it was listed as the Sertia cardigan and now on Ravelry you can just find it under slouchy cardigan. It is available from sizes small to 5XL. It is you it's an Aran weight or heavy de, heavy worsted. I think I may have said heavy DK before but I meant heavy worsted. Uh, J hook and again this one lemon peel stitch super easy so much fun to make. I, I did get a little tired on the arms or on the sleeves but that's a Jackie thing because single sleeve syndrome is a real thing y'all. It it's real. It's real. Um, let's see. As of right now, there are only 20 projects listed in Ravelry. So again, if you're looking for a good project for winter, this cardigan is very comfortable. My daughter, who I made it for, loves it. And let's give let's give Carrie some love on this project because again, there's only 20. Next is oh number eight is my girl. Tony Lipsy of TL Yarn Crafts. The Sedona sweater is the only Tunisian crochet sweater I have on this list. Right. This pattern is available in sizes small to, ex to three extra large, but it looks like there might be some information on how to increase it. It is made using scraps of DK waste, DK yarn, DK weight yarn. You are going to need a G, H, and J hook and if you're trying to scrap bust this is perfect and it the sweater is all stripes I love how she's done this the ribbing is actually done in traditional crochet when you're doing um, a single crochet in the back loop only to make the ridging uh, to, to make the ribbing now this pattern only has 31 projects are y'all are you interested in learning to, to do Tunisian crochet because again this is a perfect project for it. The way she makes it, it is not one of the reasons I like this one is because as you know, I am a I love Tunisian crochet. I do not like Tunisian crochet in the round. It gets complicated. There's there's a lot of tangles and murder and but this one is actually made from the bottom. And then you go up, you leave an opening for you know, the neck hole, and then it goes the back, and then you add the sleeves last. So this is actually made using regular Tunisian crochet. If you're not familiar, the one bright spot, I just, I keep, I'm not saying one because there's plenty, but what I love about Tunisian crochet is you're only working on the front side. Um, I forgot what I was talking about. You can get the pattern on her website, TL. What is it? T L Y C blog.com. There is an option to pay for it. It's $7.50. But again, this is an awesome project to use up scraps, test your um, Tunisian crochet skills, and end up with an awesome piece when all is said and done. The Everyday Cardigan by Ashley Kaiser of Sorella. This one, this cardigan is available in sizes extra small. To 3x it is made with a K hook using worsted weight yarn it's just rectangles yeah. some seaming and a, and and the trim so this is again an incredibly easy beginner friendly uh, cardigan now this project has has seen a lot of love it actually has 308 projects on Ravelry so that's pretty impressive and it should encourage you to um, in, in knowing that it's obviously a very easy pattern to make Number six is the Crimson Cardigan by Yay for Yarn. This pattern is so pretty. I know it's because of the color. I'm not normally attracted to this dark, just like it's garnet, such a dark red, um, but this is gorgeous. It's available in sizes extra small to 5X. There is a YouTube tutorial for this one. 
and it is it's just it's glorious okay <clears throat> it is a worsted it requires worsted weight size eye hook and you oh it, it's gorgeous this is I can't I just can't stop ooing and aahing over it hmm so pretty it actually has buttons on the front which is gorgeous so it's you can made in the round one piece and it is made well I was trying I, and it's made top down so I love top down it's a lot easier because you can try it on as you go because you know there's something about starting at the bottom going all the way up only to find out that it doesn't fit for so. yarn has a YouTube channel so you can just look through her patterns on there too because she has quite a few yeah. number five the weekend snuggle sweater now I had just mentioned this sweater on my September update because it is number one in my queue I love the look of this sweater that color is just oh it's beautiful so so pretty it is available in sizes extra small through 3x made by I'm sorry grace for the frills this one is made in a DK weight yarn and a, J, a size J hook and it it's worked flat and it is it's made from the bottom up I know what I just said about bottom up but at the same time I actually love grace for the frills she is probably she's one of my favorite uh, crochet designers I just, I just um, love her patterns they're easy to read they're easy to understand and with almost everything else she also has a YouTube channel with a tutorial for almost all of her patterns this one has been um, this one has 146 projects on Ravelry so that's pretty good and again so ah this sweater is just so cute I love I love the stitch pattern that that uh, she's created on here and it's made in four panels front back and sleeves not bad again especially if you're if your temperatures are anything like Louisiana temperatures right now you can carry around a front a back a sleeve it's okay it's good and a DK weight means it's perfect for fall without being too ugh. so number four the briar pocket cardigan by grace for the frills this is the sweater this is the cardigan that i hacked to fit my husband this one is available in sizes extra small to 3x it, it in order to hack this one what i did was i took my husband's measurements and then i just looked at the increments of how she went from you know from one size to the next and i just followed the increments until i got to the size that i needed now with that being said i did make his out of 100 percent acrylic and it ended up what's the word after i blocked it it hung a little low so it's actually a little too big but the next time i do it i'll just instead of bumping up to the exact measurement i would just go to whatever that second second to the last increment was if that makes any sense anyway if i find a picture of him of him in the cardigan i will post it here if not i will show you the the picture that i used to sh the picture that i showed him that he chose as his inspiration for his sweater i get it right all right now this one is made in pieces um, I'm trying to remember okay, it was bottom up yes it was bottom up then you do the um, the bottom comes around on one side for one panel and then you attach the second panel and then you you know seam that up and then do you you do the sleeves or you add the sleeve I can't remember anyway again she has a tutorial for this on her youtube channel it's made with air and weight yarn uh with a size k hook and it has 319 projects on ravelry so this one is a hit i love it it's it's awesome it is so so awesome you have to try this pattern just trust me you'll love this one for sure number three 
the Siegfried sweater by Justina Schrock with the Make and Do crew. This one has actually been in my queue for a little while and I think I think I might have to put it on my list for the end of this year, early next year. It is a worsted weight size J. It is available in size small to 3X. I don't actually, it doesn't show me the, you know, what the dimensions are as far as small, large, etc., etc. But it is made in the round top down. If any, I've never done a make and do crew pattern before. I know that everybody loves them and they seem to be very easy. I like the fact that the yarns they use in there for their suggested yarns are, you know, um, value yarns like this one says to use a pound of love or lion brand heartland again so, make and do crew patterns seem to be very user friendly uh which is why again i feel like i should make one and i like i like the sweater i like how it looks she looks i mean i might do something different with the sleeve because i'm not a big fan of non-tapered sleeve uh, it would rub up against i don't it's 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 a texture thing i guess i don't like you know things to rub up against my hand okay so. it's seamless so it's in the round and it's top down all right hands up for top down number two the homegirl sweater the homegirl sweater is by megan Shimes or Shames, I apologize for the pronunciation from Meg Made with Love website. I think this is an awesome, awesome sweater. Everything about it, I mean, Homegirl is the perfect name, and I mean, just look at it. It it's just so it's so cute. It's ugh. I just love it. Okay, it is made in a DK yarn. The suggested yarn is actually, I love this, Yarn B Soft and Sleek DK. It's available in sizes small to 3X. It is made flat, then you seam it together and it's oversized and you, you, it requires post stitches. These are all very simple um, instructions, as, you know, as far as like this. I feel like it's still in the beginner stage. Um, maybe, let's see, get a close-up look. Yeah, feels like it's beginner. Now, the one thing I don't like about this sweater is that it looks like it hangs off the shoulder. I'm not dissing that. For me personally, I would not wear it like that. So uh, I would probably maybe add a thicker ribbing around the neck just so that it sits on my shoulders properly. But it is still very, very cool looking. I, I love it. It has 107 projects on Ravelry. So that, I think, again, that's a good sign. Anything. The number one pick on Jackie's favorite free fall and winter sweater patterns available on Ravelry is the Brooklyn Chunky Sweater by Grace for the Frills. All right, this one again is from my girl Grace for the Frills. It is made in a super chunky weight yarn using an M or N or nine millimeter hook. It is available sizes extra small to 3XL. Again, easily adaptable if you need to go up on a size. This was so fast. Now I know it is a thick yarn. I actually, this is an anniversary cake, which is a number six. Uh, yeah, it's a number six chunky. So fast, so easy to make. And it is made in the round, hold on. Yes, top down in the round so fast so easy to make it's oh my gosh 
so fast and easy to make. It is top down in the round and I made a short sleeve version of it using um, Karen's latte. So it's nice and fuzzy and frilly and oh so delicious to hold and touch. I highly recommend this pattern. Again, I do love Grace for the Frills. Uh, there's a tutorial on her YouTube channel. This pattern has only 87 projects and I've made three. So that is my list. Please, if you can, I'm gonna link everybody down in the description box and let me know if any of these are of interest to you and let me know if you decide to make any of them. I. I love this list. I think it's a good list. Guess what I didn't do at all. <sighs> at all. I got to stop talking with my hands. <laughs> uh, just a few updates uh, as of sorts. I'm still participating in the Across the Pond Shawl Knit Along ATP SKAL 2020, 2022 um, that is being hosted by Little Monkeys and Me and Ruth Loves to Knit. I have already submitted two or three shawls and um, my September shawl will be, well, my, my August and September shawls will be the last ones because it ends at the end of this month. I also am participating in the first fall mal 2022 that's the hashtag that is being hosted by aks knits and crochets uh i've been watching their channel for oh just over a month maybe because uh it was recommended to me and i like their channel one of the one of the ladies is a knitter and one is a crocheter and they i like that they kind of there's banter back and forth, you know, but it's, I, I like the channel. I, I'm, I'm really, really liking the channel. Oh, speaking of which, I did want to give a special how do, is it a how do, a howdy, an A? Hmm. I do want to say a special hello to Claudia of Crochet, the Canadian podcast, because she shouted out me in one of her videos. And can I just tell you, I was just watching her video because I like watching her video. And when she said, I want, she, she does a, like a segment where she uh, basically shouts out a channel that she's been watching and she wanted to let other people know about. And when she said crochet HD, my mouth dropped and I'm a night owl. So I was, it was like two o'clock in the morning. I was home. I mean, I wasn't home alone. I was up all by myself. And, you know, she's talking and she's saying all of these things and I'm just sitting there going, I can't scream. I can't scream. I can't even go and tell anybody because everybody is asleep and I'm a good person and I wouldn't wake them up even though I really did think about waking them up, but I didn't because I'm a good person. But oh my goodness, it was so exciting. And that's just, and again, back to my favorite place to be, the comment section, I I'm just loving hearing feedback from everybody and my glam fam is is growing and you know I'm just I'm just so I'm just so excited and I was uh, I was trying to think there was somebody's name I wanted to Verna I wanted to specifically remember her name but now that I remember her name I can't remember why I wanted to remember her name but anyway hi Verna <laughs> If I remember whatever it is I was going to say, I'll probably, you know, I'll comment. Um, yes, I just wanted to remember Verna. So, okay. Um, again, thank you all for all the suggestions for all these crochet centric podcasts that are amazing. By the way, I am binge watching Crochet Luna. I mean, all the way back. Her channel's been up for five years and I started watching her first episode and then I watched her most recent one and or one of the more recent ones and she said if you want go back and look at my first project my first podcast and then she says no never mind don't do that but it's so much fun to look back to see where people have come from her name is Claudia also I am finding okay there's Claudia from crochet crochet a Canadian podcast there's Claudia from crochet Luna and there's Claudia from Snowbird, Sunbird, 
I think it's Sunbird Crochet. She's uh, in Germany. I have never met more Claudias in my life. And there's three right there. How funny is that? The world is weird. That's funny. Okay. Have I gotten anywhere? No, I think I put in two stitches, you guys. I, I, Y'all, I think I did. Two stitches. That's it. I think that's going to do it for me today. Let me know if any of these projects tickle your fancy. If you've already started your fall winter makes. If any of these are patterns you've already made. That would be really cool because I'd like to know. If you like this video, please like this video. If you want to stick around and watch us grow, by all means, become a member of the Glam Fam by hitting that subscribe button. And don't forget to rock that notification bell. Until next time, I've been Jackie.